Alright, this is Demon Eclipse with War Thunder, part three of four of Wo World of Warplanes versus War Thunder. Now, okay, War Thunder. The menu in this game, I'd have to say, is. Well, it feels less cluttered, at least, than World of Warplanes um, does. But that's because they miniaturize everything and everything being miniaturized is not necessarily a good thing unfortunately but it is true okay so so let's see what they have in the game they have American German Russian British and Japanese planes in the game so far there are custom battle modes, tutorial missions, and so on and so forth. There are arcade battles, historical battles, and full real battles. Um, arcade and historical battles both allow you to use the normal method of playing on a computer without peripherals, meaning you can use a mouse or keyboard if you choose. Full real battles, you can either use a joystick or the keyboard. Do not use the keyboard. It is far, far too sensitive to fly or plane with. That is not opinion, that is fact. I have, well, actually I think I left that at home. I do not have a joystick at present. So, now, this game does that thing which most games do, which some games do, which they reward you for playing the game consecutively day after day. So, I just turned on the game, I got 2,000, no, 20,000 free silver lions, and... 10,000 experience or something like, like that. <laughs> so, menu, game options, main, third person, auto login, yes. It does that silly thing where you can use your scroll wheel to affect everything, but it's kind of annoying. It also does that thing where, um, well, I wish it had in-game, um, editor, but I think we've been over this before. The graphics options are actually in a launcher outside of the game. So that's that. Male voice, female voice. Let's have a chick yell at me the rest of the game. Voice chat. There's voice chat. It's using my main USB. It's using my main headphones. So, it's just fine. So, friends. I have zero friends online. I really don't talk a lot in this game. I have checked. We all have chat. We are used to chat. There is also create room. You can create room for your friends, your um, clan. I believe there are clans being put into the game at the moment, but I'm not entirely sure how that entirely works. So, yeah. It works. Here is my pilot. I'm currently level 4. Rank 2 in American. Rank 2 in Germany. Rank 1 in... Russian rank 1 in British and rank 1 in Japanese. Gaining ranks get, gets you more planes, which allows you in turn to fly faster things. Log victories 13, finish missions 20, number flyout 66. Time played as a fighter 3 hours and 4 minutes. I'm not sure what this staggering is for. Honestly. Full real battles. Oh, historical battles. I see. Arcade battles. Yeah. No one really plays full real battles, as far as I can tell. No one, because they're just too brutal. Historical battles, they're mostly annoying. Ground targets destroyed, 110 out of 13? Really? I swear I've been flying longer than that. Uh, oh well. Logbook, arcade battles. What's this? The ratio of victories to battles. I've won a lot with those planes, haven't I? Huh. Something's weird here. Japanese Japan isn't even being counted. Medals. So these are the just like the achievements, but there's looks like we're gonna get Italy eventually at some point. Achievements, kill things. Put a sticker on your aircraft. <laughs> Seriously. Well, yeah. Decals. Unlock all this stuff. It is free, which is good. Now. Where's that button? 
Okay. Now, hangar. This is my this is one of the planes I have right now. I am carrying 130 caliber, 150 caliber, and two 100 pound bombs. You can see them strapped to the bottom there. I can also paint my plane here. I can I have decal slots. I cannot paint the main part of the plane, but you know, allies pictures. You always know the allies have the best pictures. Ready for duty, sugars, blues. Yeah, pinups. There's always got to be pinups. Lucky strike. Yeah, that'll work. These do not do anything. They just make your plane look cool. Let's cover that up, shall we? Make my plane less of a target. Actually, it'd probably make my game me more of a target. But that will be fine. It stays there, which is good. Now, research tree. Vertical research tree, just like every other thing in the game, you earn experience, you earn money, you buy planes, you fly the planes, you earn more money, you earn more experience, you get more stuff. So, right now, this is the American tech tree per snake. It's not really a tech tree. So, the the main difference between World of War planes and World of War Thunder is that War Thunder, instead of having individual upgrades within planes, it has... You buy the plane that was that serial number or sub manufacturer set. So all these are P twenty sixes, but there's a P twenty six dash thirty three dash thirty four dash thirty five. What's the difference? The engine mostly, I think. Uh, there's actually not really a difference between any of them. Reward twenty percent condition. Like, can I sell these damn things? Put into service. Yeah, I, the I put a few of these into reserve because I got better planes. I got the F two A three Buffalo, which is okay. But like, this is actually still fairly easy to um get through, and escape gets rid of it. Amazing idea, right? Okay, now weapons. This is the F two A three. It carries four fifty caliber machine guns, or if I hit select here, 450 caliber machine guns and two 100 pound bombs. Isn't that great? Yes, it is. It is. It's fantastic. As a tier 2, I get that much firepower. It means that I'm going to get shredded by something with even more firepower. Believe me, it happens. So, now the shell rack. These are different ammo belts you can equip your, your plane with. Right now, I'm using the default, which is tracer ball, incendiary, and armor piercing. There's also high explosive bullets and high explosive incendiary bullets, which are great against larger planes. Once you get into the metal planes, however, you're really looking for armor piercing incendiary, so slap rounds. Um, there's a bunch of this stuff here, omnipurpose, armor piercing incendiary, tracer, incendiary, tracer, armor piercing, for ground turrets for with tracer bullets, so it's just tracer bullets and armor piercing incendiary. Stealth attack, armor piercing, incendiary, like the big thing is once you hit once you remove the tracers, it's very hard to see where your bullets are going. Okay. So my favorite my most advanced plane I have with the Americans right now is this one here. And the torpedo bomber here. Technically it's a torpedo bomber, technically it isn't. The thing with the torpedo bombers is, is you either get a torpedo or you get small bombs. The good thing about torpedo bombers is they usually don't have many guns, so they only give you about an uh, they only give you about a seventy second reload on your ground attack bombs, which is unrealistic as fuck. But considering how good everything feels in the game, I can I can relax about that. They really need to fix that. I think it may just be the settings, but the glass has always looked bad in this game. I'm sorry, it just always has always. I'm not sure if it always will, but it, it looks a lot better than World of Warplanes, honestly. It plays a lot better. I have less connection problems, as far as I've been able to tell. And the fact that I don't feel like I'm flying with an extra ton of crap strapped to my ass on a 50-foot cord just makes it feel great. Also, if you're playing by nation, you have all the planes. All the planes you could want. 
Now, I am trying to get one of these things here from the Russian um, line. Issue being, I don't actually have um, enough experience with them specifically in order to get it. I'm still waiting. Oh, crew experience levels. Amazing. I had one really great match with this this plane here. The one good thing I've found about the beginning Russian planes, at least, is that um, they seem to just tear through the enemy. They have a lot of, um, well, they have accurate guns. I'll give them that. I can't remember how many guns they have. They have four thirty caliber machine guns, and you can put bombs on there. Where? Did, when did I not? Why did I not notice that? I love putting bombs on my planes. You know why? Because you can actually hurt people in the air with them. You know how you do that? I don't know. Basically, the blast wave for, for for the bomb actually can knock you out of the air. That's why ground strafing runs in this game are a lot harder than they are in World of Planes. Because World of Planes, the bomb will hit the ground and wait about 10 seconds before it explodes. This hits the ground, it's going to go off immediately. 100 pound bombs, unless you're over 200 feet away from them, will knock out your tail most of the time. These are 50 pound bombs that they have on here, so I'm not exactly sure how many um, feet you have to be away. I'm guessing, since it's 200 or so with the 100 pound bombs, that'd be 100. It could be more, could be less, I don't know. Um, now, immediately with any of the three factions, you're going to start off with their three basic planes, or their basic plane and the, then the two other variants of that basic plane. Then after that, you can recruit up to two crew per um, match. So you can have up to five planes active at any one time without spending any gold in a match. Of course, once you go into historic battles, you only have that one plane you're starting with. Or, if you're going into full real battles, of course you're only going to have that one free plane you're starting with. Th this game handles realistic and arcade side by side. It feels very good, but it's arcade because you have more than one plane. World of War planes, it's just arcade. You have that one life, and that's it, which actually makes the game fairly boring, because you can't make any mistakes. This game, you can. You can ram people for all it cares. I'll make money. I mean, where is that button? Here we go. Here. Okay. Now, now this is the event lock. It'll pretty much show you everything that's happened within the last few hours. Okay, so I bought a bunch of stuff. Okay, now. Now. In the arcade battles, repair is free. I have tier 1 planes, I have tier 2 planes, I have tier 3 planes. I haven't played any repair on them. I've just been refilling their ammo belts. I'm not sure if they're going to be putting repair back in or what, but I should be repairing them at this point. But they don't get damaged during battles, which is really freaking weird. So I'm always running an increase of six, 7,000 credits, even more sometimes when I'm doing particularly well. Yeah, like, I got 11,000. I got, well, 1,000. Yeah, I got 2,000 here, 1,000 there, 4,000 there, 1,900 there. Yeah, you really don't make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> like the money the money curve in this game is ridiculous. I did a really good match one time. Like I was the best of my team got over 2000 points. I have no idea how that happened. Mostly cuz I was surrounded by tier 1 morons. And I was in a tier 2 plane. That happens quite a bit. Now, like I said, the next plane I'm going for in the Russian line is going to be the SB, I think, or the PE3, but the thing is, is I'm going to have to, I have to be a higher rank in this country's Air Force in order to get it. I am Tier 1, I need to be at least Tier 3. So I'm going to get a Tier 2, but I can get this right now. 1,000 credits for this new plane, and then I can just put into service right there. It cost me 1,000 for the plane, 200 to put it in my aircraft, and voila, new plane. Let's see what this thing has on it. Oh, do you have 430 caliber machine guns? That's about it. Um, you can put a new engine, which performs better, and then you can polish the fuselage to reduce air resistance, but I don't really see that helping all that much. I mean, what would help this one, like, immediately is just trying to streamline this front here. It's 
kind of stuck where it is, but one, two, three, four guns. Great. And they're very tightly focused, very tight guns. More people also in this game than World of Warplanes, it seems. 128 people versus the 40 or so that was in World of Warplanes versus War Thunder. Also, where War of with Wargaming.net, their series, World of series, there'll be three separate games. This is going to be one game. Main problem I'm running into right now is that they have torpedo bombers in the game. Are there any sea missions? No, there aren't. I'm waiting for them to put the sea missions in so I can actually use my torpedo bombers to some effect. Because right now they're mostly useless. And can I really... Do I really want to wait? No. I'm impatient. Why would I want to wait? Okay, now. Let's just... Now... As you can see, the game is a lot more responsive than World of War Warplanes was. In addition, I can do this! Do a barrel roll! Whee! See? Okay, now, landing! My gear was up, now my gear is going down. It does this really, really weird cr crisscross thing, and I have to slow down. I have to slow down quite a bit. If I'm going over 450 kilometers an hour with this um, plane, I can actually lose my landing gear. Is that realistic? Yes. I can still do... Damn it. Oh, damn it. Oh. <laughs> I'm talking too much. I gotta focus on what the fuck's in front of me. I can't believe I crashed that. Oh. <laughs> Seems like no one actually got that we're supposed to capture the airfield. Okay, now, air brakes. Very important. And I'm still gaining speed. Wonderful. I'm gonna crash again, aren't I? Oh, man. One thing I don't like about Russian planes is that they always seem to be very reluctant to landing. I'm gonna have to... I'm half I'm gonna have to go up and around to see if I can capture this. Is there anyone actually on my team? Yeah, there's like five there's five actual humans on my team. Everyone else is a bot and bots don't actually do jack all in this game. Come on, come on, come on. Breaks great thing about this game is they pretty much give you control over everything you'd expect to get out of a actual flight sim. That You can control the rudder, you can control the flaps, I'm not going to press shift because I'll go straight into the freaking ground, but control, all my flaps make me go straight up, or as up as I can get really. And, like, the biggest problem I'm having with this game is that it just seems to take a very lucky shot to actually kill anyone when you're using 30 caliber guns. We need something heavy. You basically need something heavier or else you're not going to be able to do some anything. There we go. And right now, I I have four thirty caliber guns. They they're good, but they're not fantastic. I want something. You need something a lot heavier than thirty caliber guns. Fifty cal's work fantastic. Right now, I'm working towards getting a um, German 
um, plane with 20, a 20 millimeter cannon strapped to the front of it. I have no idea how well that'll work, but that's its only weapon. So long as I hit someone with it, they're going down. I mean, 20 millimeter. Well, it's. Come on, stay still. Okay. Now the main problem I have with this game is that it has both an overheat mechanic and an ammo mechanic. Like one or the other, please. I'm flying a plane. There should be air-cooled guns. Okay, let's get rid of those bombs. Maybe I can fly a little bit faster. Hold still! I'm being shredded by an enemy plane that's behind me that's being attacked by an ally and you know, shit happens. There is friendly fire in this game. It is annoying, but it's ma more manageable than some other games. Yeah. Okay, he's down. Now, in this game, if someone's on fire, they will go down. It's just a matter of time. Now, I have been able to pull out of a roll and la take a soft land when my engine's on fire, but that's pretty much all I've ever been able to do. It's, it's pretty bad, actually, trying to save your plane when it's on fire. And, from my experience, that's a lot more realistic than um, World of War plane in that world of warplanes you go on fire you well it's about the same thing but world of warplanes it does not allow you to land at all and that's a problem because you should be able to land if you have damages you're going to land my my left aileron's out you gotta let me land no we're not gonna allow you to do that and simulator over arcade world of war thunder has a much better mix world of warplanes it's strict ar it's a very strict arcade but it's still pretty much um preference okay now problem with w war thunder it doesn't allow you to really do like a splits and stuff like that very easily i mean you can but it's kind of a pain in the butt or at least in my experience, maybe I'm doing it wrong. I'm not the best pilot on the planet, but I usually do fine. Damn it, out of ammo. Okay, now, the good thing about the early level biplanes and stuff like that is you can pr it's a lot easier to land them because their landing gear is always out, and all you really have to do is turn off your engine and hit brake, and as soon as you touch down, you'll lose speed. Now, what I'm going to do here is just land, pick up some more bombs, then head out and try to take out some of the ground targets. Ground targets include, from what I've seen, um, M3 tanks, M4 tanks, M5 tanks, um, M3 stewards, M5 stewards, obviously, um, BT7s, BT2s. Um, I have 3,000 ammo for my machine gun. Really? You're shitting me, right? Oh, man, it's going to take them forever to finish arming my bomb. But, well, it's a lot shorter than going in the air. Um, it's hard to take out a BT-7 with 30 millimeters. Once you get up to the 50s, it's a lot easier. Once I get that 20 millimeter can, it's really easy. I'm not sure how these 50 um, kilogram bombs are going to do against... 50, 50 pound bombs, I'm sorry, are going to do against a BT-7, but we're going to see. So I'm going to reload. It's going to put me at the end of, end of the airfield, and I'm going to go into war emergency power. Get up to 250, and I automatically lift off. Lifting off in this game is really easy. Problem is, is once you, if you are below a certain altitude, your instructor takes over, and he will not let you turn the plane. And I'm actually 
I'm I'm competent pilot at best. I really wish I could make the um map up in the corner a bit bigger just to see if I could see something cuz right now it's about 10 clicks out. And that's annoying. Okay. Now my my sights are trained at 800 meters, which means, and that's the farthest they can go out, which means that I have to be within 800 meters in order to actually, come on, turn. See what I mean by it's kind of annoying having to hit these guys? Where'd he go? Where did he go? He's like right in front of me, behind me. See, oh, how do you get above me? Guess I took that dive a bit steeper than I should have. Just die already. There we go, finally! Die! Die in fire! Okay, now we got some AA on the ground. These are usually very, very lightly armored. Um, almost... Yeah, they're very lightly armored troop transports with big guns strapped to the back of them. We can do a quick flyby, get as low as we can, get into these trees. Let's get this guy in the ass. And it's a seven minute, it's six and a half minute reload. I actually hit him. And unfortunately, the major problem with this game is a lot of it boils down to luck. And it... ouch! No, turn, 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 turn! Ah! Oh. oh well. I don't think anyone's actually paying attention to what's going on. At least not on my team. Okay, now. Wow, I'm leading. Amazing. How the hell did that happen? Especially with me yammering on like this. Okay. Now, the best way to take people out, at least in this mode, as far as I know, is to actually take over the base. I'm going to have to hit my air brakes because I'm about to... I knocked him out with some bombs. I'm not sure if anyone's done that before. Gun jammed. Crippin' eh? Oh, it just overheated. Critical hit. He lost something important. Okay, um, let's see if, there's a ground unit over here somewhere, I'm fairly close, there we go, light tank, 10 to 1, these are usually BT2s, I can't remember who exactly we're supposed to be fighting against, I think it's the Germans, but, um, honestly, I don't know, looks like he's in the middle of the forest, this could be a bit dangerous for me to do, but it's good to get a good view of what's going on. Yeah, I believe, yeah, that's a BT two. Yeah, see, BT two. Um, you guys may need to have gone go back and pause that to actually see it, but um, yeah, it's a BT two. 
I'm surprised they took it out so easily with 30 millimeter machine guns, but I'm not really sure how they're planning on making the armor mechanics work as of yet. Then again, I was shooting at his side, his rear, so maybe that's it. I'm also coming in at a good angle to penetrate his armor as well, so... Ugh. And I think actually, like... It's not very safe to do, but it is possible to land out in these fields. I may ch well, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. It's too big of a risk. Generally, the tanks don't shoot at us either, so... It won't die! The other one died so easily. I may have to go back and get some bombs. Just wasting time shooting at the little thing on the ground. Okay, someone else got him. Someone else blew him the fuck up. I don't see any allies. Yeah, there are artillery emplacements near your airfield when you... Well... Something like that. Yeah, victory will be ours. I think actually we just killed this one last guy and we should win. This is an AI, by the way. He's flying a Japanese plane, you can tell by the name. We should be flying a Japanese plane anyways. What, did I kill him? One thing about Japanese planes in this game is that they're very, very fast. Which is a slight problem for my slow-ass um, Russian plane. I think I can top out at 350. I'm supposed to be able to anyways, but I actually have no clue. Okay, enough chasing down the freaking AI. I'm going to go and capture their base. A, it's more lucrative, and B, it's faster. Because I'm a slow ass, in a slow ass Russian plane. <sighs> Is he following me now? Yeah, perfect. Almost perfect. I think the AI caught on to me. I just gotta wait for my gun to cool down. I thought I critically damaged him. Why isn't he going down? Yeah, usually you can just knock out someone's engine and eventually they'll go down, but you know. Die, sucker! I think he's gonna try to land it. Reload, damn you! Finally! Yeah. hasn't happened in a while. My gums are bleeding. Just really bad dentistry. Coastal team has lost all of its aircraft. Now they are going down. Final blow. Deliver the final blow. Goody. Destroy the most targets. <laughs> I did way too well. I did, yeah, I did way too well. Yes! More planes to screw around with. New decal horse on hand. Head the most assists, destroying aircraft. Destroyed the most ground targets, destroyed the most air targets to deliver a final blow. 
and of course daily x2 events with each individual country okay now when you when your crew levels up in this game it doesn't level up just one person it's the entire crew that crew is then you then switch out the aircraft that crew uses in order to go to the other place now now you also have well okay the entire crew is the pilot, gunners, ground service, and qualification. I have no idea what the last one is. Uh, ground service, um, how fast they repair your plane, how fast they reload the plane, how fast they re heal it, heal the pilots and the gunners that actually go out and get shot at, and... Um, <laughs> man, this is going on too long. I should have explained this first, but whatever. Repair, repair, reload, and heal. Gunners, number of experience gunners, one, I have how many gunners you can put on a plane, I guess. Fire accuracy, fire precision, do you tolerate stamina, vitality, vitality, how much health they have and how fast they recover. Stamina is how long they can go out and be on a plane. Pilot, keen vision, G tolerance, ground service. I'm going to upgrade ground service. So, you gain experience points. I have no idea what this is based off of. But, let's see. Repair and reload. I want to upgrade those two things. And you can buy crew XP with money! Isn't that fantastic? No, it isn't. Okay, so... As you increase these in rank, they're going to cost more and more. So just upgrade that and upgrade that as well. And that's going to be really annoying because they're going to keep on asking for money to do the basic shit for your crew. Pilot. Keen vision, G tolerance, and... No. Hmm. Well, I thought I had more than that. So. Now, on to Germany. Where was that plane? I think. Okay. So the HE 112A01. I thought I had that. I have it. I have one. And it's actually this one here. So. What? Okay, let's see. Oh! Oh, 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 okay. So, this one has two thirty caliber machine guns, this one has one 20 millimeter cannon, and this one has two thirty caliber machine guns and two cannons. Hmm. Interesting. What's this Falco thing? Two fifty caliber machine guns, nice. It's going to take me a while to do all this, isn't it? <laughs> so, now, okay, so I need to be level 3 in order to get this. I can get the Falco right now. It really won't take me that long to get it either. I have another rank with this, these people. You really got to pay attention to ranks because it really doesn't tell you anything when you get them. Or when you get them, how you get them. There we go. Applying process, blah, blah, blah. So, next I will be taking... I thought I just used up all these. Okay, that works. Okay, now I'll be cutting this video off before I go into the next battle, because quite frankly the battles last quite a bit longer than they should in this game. 
So <laughs> 40 minutes for this. It took me 40 minutes to put those two videos for World of Warplanes together, but the battles last so much longer in this game and are more interesting that I believe it's worth it. So on to the next video, part four, four World of Warplanes versus War Thunder, says Ben Demonog.